Hi everybody, welcome very much to the channel once again. Ezo is here, bringing you a game from the top of the online ladder. We have on the color pink is Widow Mine in the Avacid Dynasty versus one puppy paw representing his individuality in the color teal or cyan playing as the Delhi Sultanate. The map is a rocky river because... I mean, we can't really call this a river, can we? Just like four ponds chilling with like two fishes each. Bro, wait, just, just remove the fish, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a disrespect for this map to maintain the fi these two fishes. I'm just joking, guys. I'm just joking. Great map, actually. I enjoyed this map, though. And welcome to the channel. If you enjoy, leave a like and subscribe. Use the links down below on the description to find me and Puppy Paul live on Twitch as well. And if you don't know, Puppy Paul, the second best player in the world, got second in the most recent, like, not even a month ago, Red Bull Wololo El Reinado. And Widow Mine is now currently at top 14 on the online ladder. They're using a Basset considered to be one of the strongest sieve in the game at the moment by the pro players. They have a lot of good, good things, a lot of bonuses, a lot of little rewards as they do their things. So first they got fresh foodstuffs, means fre um, not fresher villagers, but cheaper villagers. Cheaper villagers means faster edge up timings or more access to military. Then they have plus 15 gathering rate once they got 10 buildings connected, plus the cheaper villagers, it means a lot of uh, food and just uh, wood perhaps because of the 15% gathering rate available to use on units in the feudal age. And then <coughs> their eco wing got buffed, fertile crescent got buffed, and now they have even cheaper town centers, even cheaper farms, cheaper houses, so they can go like three TCs and make army in feudal go castle it it of course there is ways to stop it but it's very very strong very hard to stop especially at the high level matchups matter a bit more because the skill level will be closer to each other not like really right because still i think a play like puppy paw should be better than widow mine unless this is a smurf account that we don't know right where they are but in the end of the day, we are expecting a spectacle because the daily player, Puppy Paw, is playing a very aggressive civilization. But there has been some different changes. Doom of the Fate, here we go. Usually, it was always Tower of Victory on the daily side, right? Allowing your infantry to attack 20% faster. But recently, players have been pivoting more into the Dome of Faith because it allows you to buy cheaper scholars. That means more scholars. That means faster technologies. You can go for the sacred sites. You can get F scholars into your military buildings, making units faster. And it also means if you have more scholars and your techs are faster, that you can go for professional scouts, which is free, but takes like four minutes. But if you have like 10 scholars, which is the max, so let's not say, let's not say 10, let's say five but they were cheaper, it will be way quicker to get professional scouts, and then you have food under your town center. The thing is, it's still complicated to use professional scouts, just because of the fact that your scouts will be exposed, and the enemy with a couple horsemen can put, or just parking some spearmen on the deer, or if they go professional scouts themselves, and snag deer away. So, the thing is, for Delhi, you don't invest on it, other sieves invest, and then you might lose the scouts, because you, you have to get the, the, the meal, then you have to get the professional scouts, then you have to make a stable, then you have to get scouts, and then actually use the technology. If you lose, it's different, because you already have the hunting cabin, where you can make scouts from, so you save a little bit of resources on the mill and on the stable. But every other sieve needs to... It's actually a really, really big investment, but it's really, really good. It's like one of the best techs in the game, in terms of value. Getting all that deer under your town center is extremely, extremely strong. And we don't mind is coming back to the base, delivering some sheep. And here we go, second TC at least. I think, yeah, no third TC play. You can see when a third TC play is coming, when the second TC is dropped by the stone. Papi Paul, making some scholars. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah, he's making scholars now. 
No military buildings yet. Got all the technologies possible. Getting some... Religious technologies as well. Still, is, is this going to be a farm transition as well from Widowmine? To TC farm transition because they're also cheaper as you can see. Only 14 down from 75 to 49. Not as good as the English ones. Which they don't, they don't even have to get an upgrade. Right? They just are cheaper by default. But with the plus 15 gathering rate and the cheaper villagers, you have a different economical power, right? On the Abbasid. The people will be for the classic stable opening with the Ghazi Raiders roaming around, doing some damage with though, responding with the barracks, and yeah, farm transition. They still have so many, they like, they have 14 sheep, but they're doing the farms already, I guess, to like, then not to be so impactful because sometimes you run out of food. And then you have no farms or a little amount of farms. And then you have to make a lot of farms in a row. And it takes time. It's, it's a lot of wood. You have barely no food while you're doing that. So doing the farm transition slowly allows you to not overburden your economy. And always have some food available. Right? But I think it just demonstrates how easy uh, it is to do second DC into farms. Like... We have 14 sheep and you still go for farms like no problem. Guys is arriving though. Three guys already on, on the field. Always remember, <clears throat> my bad guys, that Delhi can produce 100% faster by researching efficient production and by placing scholars inside the military buildings. And that's why Dome of the Fate is so good because if you go Tower of Victory, you usually only have two scholars. So you have to decide when do I put it on the building? When does it go for a sacred site? When or where or when? I mean, is it in the musk to get technologies? If you have more scholars, you just use them for everything. You know? A villager almost going down, but the Ghazi and the scout cannot finish it. On the other side, the Spearman defends. The further Ghazi is coming in. Oops, my bad, guys. Okay, who cares about berries when you can go already for farms? And then... On the castle age, you can get better farms from the Vasi dynasty as well. 200, it's a bit expensive, but I think it's very worth it. On top of 15% gathering rate, on top of fertilization and horticulture, right? So, incredible food economy, incredible farm income from the Vasid. First sacred site being captured by Puppypo. At this moment, he does not need walls. Because his walls are the map control, is applying pressure to the enemy. So if the enemy goes to decay at the sacred site, either he just goes with one unit and the people can, can kill it, or he goes with a whole army, leaving the base exposed. Right? Oh, here we go. This will be a transition into camel archers. And that's what really crazy, that's what really makes Abbasid very, very strong, is the ability to go to TC, farm transition into camel archer spam, which are very strong units. They debuff horses, they do extra damage to spearmen, and they do base 12 damage. And they have like 180 HP or something. They are also really expensive. They were a bit more, they got nerfed, uh, they got buffed in that case, where they became less expensive. And then Portal Crescent also got less expensive. So you just can do more things with the Vasid. Already here, the 15% gathering rate available for Widow Mine. Right? So, the food, bro, the, 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 the eco is here. Do we have the necessary military buildings to keep this going? Keep the ball rolling? Then will there be actually archers? No camel archer transition, maybe not enough farms yet? Because they cost 170 food, 60 wood, right? So maybe he, yeah, I think we're the ones to make more farms. But the thing is, the, an archer costs 50 wood, so it's kind of the same burden, right? I mean, not really, because one does not cost 180 food. You gotta feed the camels, you gotta feed the camels. There you go, sacred site will be neutralized. Three sacred sites under control, though. So Puppy Paw can just let one go, he still has the other one. But I think he might want to defend this. Yeah, oh! He's switching to his own archers, but remember, no Tower of Victory, so it means these archers are very normal. 
they do not attack 20% faster, but also with a cheaper, not cheaper, with the free technologies, you can invest more, <clears throat> my bad guys, <clears throat> you can invest more into archers because you're not building, you're not paying uh, the resources for that those technologies, which is in the end of the day, still a little bit, right, still a considerable amount. Now, this sacred site will be decaptured, as long as three power has two sacred sites, he's good. Of course, he wants three, but if he has two, that's all right, and he's very close to the castle age. He's already almost 20 villagers behind, though. And the, I don't think the Gazis can take this fight over here from the Spearman and the Horseman. They just had their chilling. House of Learning coming in from Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw. No, it's Puppy Paw. Paw. Oh, nice. Bamboozlement of the Spearman. Archers are walling. No. Wait, I'm here and seeing stabs. Okay, stabby stab over there. Oh, it's actually some maces. Ooh, you, you, you. We don't mind as a lot of units. I don't know if Puppy Paw going castle will be able to defend. Maybe you can. I think Delhi. I know it's weird because the, the, the technologies come very late for Delhi. But first, you have a lot of scholars. Eight scholars in the mosque. So your technologies upon castle age will be quick. And then you can place a scholar inside of a stable or a barracks. And then you can print when at arms and knights. And it's 100% faster. If you have the economy, that's why you want the prolongated feudal age with Delhi to have the economy rolling, some economies already, some eco upgrades already available, scholars into the musks to make those technologies faster as well. And then boom, you take three or four scholars as well, grab the relics, spam the men at arms. And if you can, just keep, if you didn't lose a lot of Ugazis, just keep raiding with them. Keep the enemy in their base, not in your base. Right, it's already one relic, two relics. Three relics, immediate pickup from Puppy Paw. Who needs Uber Eats when we have Scholar Eats? Badoots. Let's go. Puppy Paw coming through. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> Widow Mine is ready to draw blood. No villagers has been have been lost. He's already 24 villagers behind Puppy Paw, but he has three sacred sites. And now Widow Mine is going castle. Is it wise to attack while going castle? He's detaching some horsemen to go and decap the other sacred site. This middle one should be lost. Men at arms already coming in. Knights already coming in. Welcome Twitch chat. Welcome, welcome. We're recording for YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. We're doing great. I hope you guys are doing great as well. Bro, that Wololo is almost coming through. What the hell? Oh, because you got piety plus 40 HP. But those are like four horsemen. Right? They do... Okay, only nine damage. That's true. Because that scholar is tanky. Look at that. 130. That's a... Bro, that scholar goes to the gym. That scholar goes to the... Gee, bro, that's crazy. Look at that. YouTube viewers, Twitch viewers are saying hi to you here on the chat. Welcome, welcome. Today, Mohena? Okay, but people still in a good position or in a not so bad position. He can always go for some keeps. But the thing is, now he has to build the keep first, and then get Village Fortress, but yes, House of Learning. Oh, Hearty Russians is really, really good. He might, have he might have less villagers, but they're gonna be more efficient, because they're gonna be carrying plus 10 on top of Wheelbarrow. Right, so a lot of efficiency. But already 30 wheels behind. Is this still doable? Or are we already on GG territory for Puppy Paul? Push, yes. As Puppy Paul losing, not winning. Bro, they really need to change the sword at, from the Delhi Man at times. It really looks like a plastic sword or like a giant milk ice cream, which you call mini milk here in Portugal. It's literally just a cylinder of milk on a stick and then frozen. 
It bro, it lo really looks like a milk ice cream. Look at that. Hopefully it's not summer. We don't mind. He hits the castle age. Getting boot camp, increasing the HP of the infantry. Getting wheelbarrow only at 15 minutes. Who needs wheelbarrow when you have golden age, tier one, and fresh food stuffs? Oh wait, Bobby Boy is bringing all the scholars. Do we have herbal medicine to boost the scholar healing rate? Armies will clash. Widow retreating until he has the castle age upgrades. He has a lot of army. He has only though only two camel riders to deal with the men at arms kinda efficiently. Oh, that's a great fight. We fully zoomed out and on cinematic mode. The armies are clashing. Nice choke point. That's a lot of TC damage. It's going well for Puppy Paw. He's retreating the cavalry. The scholars are healing extra time. The front line is the many times are still alive. It's actually a very good fight. The archers picking up the spearmen. The many time just tanking. The cavalry is trying to go around and find. Oh, it's open over there. They can go for it. And Puppy Paw is holding. Do we have plus two range defense? No, it's arriving. So it can be even a better fight. After that, research comes through. All right. Oh, villagers going down. It's only six. Bro, 30 villager lead for Widow Mine once again. And they just lost eight villagers. This could be almost 40 villager lead. Moment of calmness after the storm. People floating gold. Like a madman. Oh, no way. Oh, he sees it. He sees it. That's a lot of villagers. 19 villagers. Oh, no. The knights go in plus the Ghazi raiders. More villagers going down. We don't mind losing some eco. The thing is, he lost a lot of army too. So he needs all the eco to repopulate his army. It's not looking good, it's not looking good. Alright, people with 18 kills so far. He's going on for Village Fortress. He needs to wait two minutes. Oh, and he has a uh, Widow minus front gold. A problematic to secure it. He was on this gold for a little bit. Got around 500 gold from there. Oh, and Puppy Paw goes for professional scouts. A bit later than usual, but that's really nice. He has so many deer carcasses on his base just chilling. Yeah, oh, because the, oh no, the village fortress is close to the mask, so it is being researched faster. Puppy Paw engaging once again. It's a lot of arrow damage here, but not the same as the town centers. No sprinkled in placement. It's another good fight here. Puppy Paw. That's a lot of archers with composite bows, I believe. But no plus two ranged attack, so not, they're not doing full damage. Okay, Widow is losing a lot of archers here. Puppy Paw on the back line, close to Imperial Age. He's doing a lot of damage, but he can't fight archers versus archers. Widow's archers are just better. Puppy Paw also on four relics and two sacred sites. I see the fifth, I think he knows where it is. The villagers need to evacuate, the knights doing an excellent job. And now they will backstab the archers. No, they go for the villagers. With the mine moves to this wood line here. Horrible choice. Now being chased. The knights will get more victims. 27, 27 kills already. Poor Puppy Paw. Remember, he was almost 40 villagers behind. Now only 20 with four relics, two sacred sites. More efficient villagers. 
He got every single technology, so his knights doing plus three damage, the men at arms doing plus three damage as well. And he, also, his archers has, have plus 0 0.5 range from a house of learning technology as well. We don't mind forced to go into his base. Ten villager lead only. People are doing a great job recovering. And people now goes to secure the sacred site. Look at them, they're moving so fast. What the hell? This forced march? It, it was. Now just can drop some walls, get the sacred site. Oh, and Widow is struggling for wood too. He could get that. No, there is no space for a lumber camp over there. But people with a huge military lead. Fifth relic. Ah, the scholar is on something. He was getting something into his season. Look at that. He's going so fast. More kills. Bro, people killed 40 villagers. He reduced the villager lead from Widowmine to only 5. A mere 5 villager lead. And now, villager fortress is also completed. Now he's making his own uh, second TC, basically. And he can drop another keep, right, to get another TC. He's going Imperial Age very, very soon with the Hisar Academy, which will give food by the number, multiplied by the number of technologies. And because you then you get all those free technologies from the previous ages, plus the Imperial Age ones, being rushed by 31 villagers. Okay, Widow switching to a Ghulam play, and Cross was in the back. I think Widow lost every single advantage he had. But people on 5 relics, 3 sacred sites, 2 TCs, Imperial Age timing with the Side Academy. I think it's GG, but for Widow, Imperial Age. The technologies will take some time to come in. Manganel in the back. No Springle from Widow to deal with that. And he has no idea. Oh, the Manganel does not go through the sacred site. So no vision. Now the Manganel is revealed. The keep is over there. Huge uh, save point for the Puppy Paw. Imperial upgrade coming through. He'll take still around a minute. Oh, but the Puppy Paw can wait a minute. He kills more villagers. Look at the destroyed value as well. It's not really accurate, but it's really huge. Or Puppy Paw. Farm transition completed. Still with some deer in the base. Remember that both of these sieves cannot take the boar. But they can go fishing. Look at that beautiful place. Keep town center between two berries with extra gathering rate for the deli. 2,600 food per minute. Puppy Paw keeping the pressure on Widow Mine, and Widow knows people is around the corner, he's not stopping. Widow doesn't have a lot of vision on Papipo's side of the map, I don't think he knows about the, the multiple keeps, but people could just drop a keep here too, but I don't think that's what he wants. Incendiary arrows coming through. Making sure those archers from Puppy and crossbows will do even more damage. This might be the last fight of the game. Manganel shots doing their work. Puppy Paw has no front line here present though. That might be a problem. The range units doing a good job. Archers mixed with crossbows, deleting everything. Hand cannoneers join the fight. Oh, the Gulams are just walking free. The Manganel is now exposed. But people might be forced to retreat. The Manganel goes down. And the military lead is being lost. But people need frontline. But he can just fall back to the keep. And remass over there. Still, the sacred sign still counting. Six, seven minutes to go, basically. And the gold is trickling. But people now 13 villagers ahead. With five relics and three sacred signs. It's no joke. Widow on this very exposed gold. Puppy Paw is diving once again. Can we check the production of Puppy Paw? Five barracks, five stables, 
and for archery ranges, but remember, those can be counting for two, depending if you have scholars inside or not. And Puppy Paw is just tanking this huge army from Widowmine, but Puppy Paw is more... Oh, but no, he has 30 scholars, so in reality, he only has 40 units, plus 30 scholars, right? But, uh, are they all in technologies? In musks and stuff? Oh, but it's, I think it's really good. You keep the enemy busy. That's a great play from Puppy Paw. You keep the enemy busy. We have 30 scholars getting these technologies ASAP, right? And then, when you're ready, you pop the scholars out and they be healing for days. But Widow approaching the Imperial Age as well. Puppy Paw pressing the issue. He wants to finish this sooner rather than later. The Bombard he is here. And remember, you cannot edge up faster with the Abbasid. You have to wait a bit of a time. You have to wait almost two minutes for that edge up. And then get technologies. But with Culture Wing, you can get cheaper technologies. With the Preservation of Knowledge. And with uh, Golden Age tier 2. No, it's GG. It doesn't matter. Imperial Age is not here for Widow. What a play from Puppy Paw. That's how you beat Abbasid. You play Feudal, you have an excellent castle each time, you raid, 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 while building your own advantage with Relic, Secret Sites, and later Town Centers. What a play. Guys, check me live on Twitch, check Puppy Pond Twitch as well. Leave a like and subscribe. What a match. You can see the difference in the villagers. Puppy Paw villagers going up, with the villagers going down. And the thing is, Puppy Paw was always able to have a nice military to press and defend economy-wise. Puppy Paw with 3k more food, wow, 5k more gold, and a thousand more stone. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. See you next time.